Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Uh, Preston, looks like a couple of LSU uh, commits, Jabari Antoine and Keelan Moses, are going to take a visit this weekend elsewhere. Are you concerned about that? Well, certainly not Keelan Moses. Jabari Antoine a little bit, but Keelan Moses, I've talked to him on, on a number of occasions. He is about as vocally pro-LSU as they come. He's He's been very candid about his love for LSU. Uh, you know, it, he talked a lot about how, you know, he feels like his brother kind of regretted going to Alabama. Uh, and we all know that that decision really came down. That was a consequence of the, you know, Les Miles termination. So I'm not too, too worried about them really. I mean, players go out and they go take visits. That's what they do over the summer. Every recruit needs a backup plan. You never know if a coach gets fired. There's a scandal at a school. You need to have schools you're familiar with. So Jabori Antoine, more worried about the Keelan Moses, not worried about Keelan at all. So that's it. I think you kind of answered my next question, but I'd like to unpack it a little bit more. As far I mean, I'm pro 17, 18-year-old kids seeing the country on somebody else's dime. That's an opportunity yeah. that not very many people get. So, man, go get go get it and go do it. But if you're Keelan, if if you're a school that's taking Keelan Moses in on a Keelan Moses in on a visit and he's been so openly pro LSU, is it feel like a waste of time? Well, not really because I mean, it's the same reason he wants to check you out other than, you know, but by the way, I've always thought that University of Hawaii is really missing an opportunity to to get kids coming to their campus just for, you know, a trip to, to Hawaii. They've and got a different fine. policy. You have to have an offer, I believe, to to get them to pay for you to come out there. I think that's the, the way that their sports work, because I think a lot of people would do that if that was the case. Yeah, well, they're just missing a chance to at least put their name in front of the five-star kid. You yeah, know? Like, true. Like, I, I'm always shocked when I see that they haven't taken advantage of that, but uh, um, but you know the same reason that the player is looking in the school is the reason you know that the school is interested in that player because things happen. Backup options are needed. You know LSU might you know lose. Uh, let's put it like this: when Texas A&M fired Jimbo Fisher last year, I'm sure Gabriel Relaford was very happy that he had been familiar with LSU, as was Dominic McKinley, because you don't have to go through the recruiting process from scratch. You're, you're familiar with these entities and programs already. For sure. And then you can hop in the transfer portal after here if things don't work out at your current spot. In that case, I mean, you, you yeah. kind of know things. So that's that's a, that's a brave new world here as well. Uh, what kind of player is Keelan Moses? Oh, he models himself after Harold Perkins. Uh, he told me that directly right when he committed. He's like, yeah, they're talking to me about using me like a Harold Perkins, you know, just all over the field, running around, but still getting after the quarterback. Uh, and, and that is what he, he – he's not a super big, thick linebacker. He's not 6'5 or anything like that. He, he's a speed guy. So um, that's probably your your best comparison you're going to get out of him, if I, in my opinion. Antoine, six one corner, uh, comes out of New Iberia. That's obviously a place Corey Wayman – Pretty familiar with. Um, they got to restock the shells at defensive back. How do you think they're they're doing on that uh, on that route? Well, they did a really good job in the twenty four class, just bringing in a lot of guys. No five star guys, so to speak, but like a lot, you know, a lot of just really quality players. Uh, you like Deshaun McBride out of Denham Springs and what he can bring. Kylan Jackson, the safety out of Zachary. Uh, you really like uh, – he looked really good in the spring game. Jawan Johnson, Mr. Louisiana football, who, who on the offensive side of the ball had the most yards in LHSAA history. So a lot of good players. This year they're really – they're shooting for the fences here, man. Uh, this weekend they're going to bring in uh, five-star safety, uh, and they're bringing in um, uh, DJ Pickett. Last weekend yep. was on campus, five-star corner. So th they've got guys all over the place that – they're looking for, um, and, and I think Corey Raymond's getting it. Jonah Williams is a safety they're bringing yes. in this weekend. I apologize. I had a little gap there. But anyways, yeah, they're, 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 they're getting after recruiting at a much higher level than we saw in the first couple of years of the Brian Kelly tenure here. Usually elite camp was a big opportunity to get two, three, four commitments. That was in the old recruiting calendar. Now things have moved up because of the early signing period and whatnot, and it feels like the camp is more so geared toward sophomores and juniors. Is that kind of the sense that you've gotten as far as the visitors they've had over the last four, five, six days? Yeah, well, the camps 
definitely where you're doing a lot more of evaluation in yeah. those, those classes and you're wanting to get those long-term relationships. But all these official visits, these are, these are all seniors we're talking about. They've got about a dozen official visits, and I think almost all of them are four-star or better players this weekend. Uh, I think, I think the, uh, Jonah Williams is your only five-star guy, but a lot of quality players. So let's put it like this. You're building a lot of relationships with those 26 and 27 guys, but it's your 25 guys. At the end of summer, most of them are making a decision. Like it, it, it's been scooted up now because a lot of these guys are, you know, they just wrap up their football season before signing day, right? And they're ready. They want to have that decision made before they start football season. So it's not, you know, they're not preparing for a state championship and deciding who they're going to go play football for the next day, although players do do that. Uh, this is really crunch time. Uh, the next two, three months, that that's, where the coaches are focused on getting their 2025 20, class together. The name that uh, popped for me in this uh, in this visitor list that I saw, and it's not because of I know how good a player he is. I just I remember his dad, a uh, Chuck Wiley's son, C.J. Wiley, a four-star wide receiver from Georgia, is in town this weekend. So LSU legacy, they're trying to pull in there. Uh, you saw some game times that came out, and it looks like LSU is going to play a lot of games at night inside Tiger Stadium. Now that the 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 tug of war between CBS and ESPN is over fighting for who gets what. Do you expect to see LSU play the vast, vast majority of their games at home at night moving forward in this television contract? Well, Hunt, I don't have it right in front of me, but I believe what I saw was three games are, are for sure at night and five are in that flex. Uh, 237 flex slot. Did, did I get that right? Yes, you did. Okay. Okay. So let's put it like this. If you go over, on those flex spots, and they're all 230, they're going to have some grumpy LSU fans. I mean, real grumpy. But um, probably not as grumpy as people renaming their conference to All-State 12, but but still not <laughs> happy. Um, so it just depends on where the cookie crumbles. I, I'd say that for ESPN, it's not as big of a deal for them because regardless of whether it's a 230 or uh, a, a 7 o'clock start for them, they're they're still getting the game. They're 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 not trying to put on a TV show afterward. You know, they're not trying to put How I Met Your Mother on right afterward like CBS is. So, and they're not like you know, CBS. It's really structured. So we get one game. That's it. We get one doubleheader a year. There's that flexibility uh, with ESPN. So, if, if you're asking me, I would say uh, they, unless there's some environmental games that would cause people not to watch it or whatever uh who cares if you can go either one i, I would say probably lsu will end up with more nighttime games but because they want to show off saturday night in death valley exactly i don't i in my contention is and i'll this we'll, we'll have to see it will prove it itself out over time now that, because cbs if they won in tiger stadium and they didn't have their one night game like they were going to have to take it at 2 30 that's not the case for espn and there are so many great options right. great venues great matchups bringing oklahoma and texas in that if, if you're going to pick one and one and you got one game at 2.30 and one at 7 o'clock and the Tiger Stadium can be at 7 o'clock and then you can go to A&M or Oklahoma or Florida or Georgia or Tennessee or Bama or Auburn at 2.30 where they don't care, well, you might as right. well do that. I, I just think it makes the decision really, really easy. And my expectation is that LSU is rarely going to play in the afternoon or morning in, in, in Tiger Stadium now that the tug of war between CBS and ESPN is over. That's just I'm just using deductive reasoning there. Yeah, and, and, and I'd say the bigger win is as much as LSU doesn't like that 2.30 slot, they hate an 11 a.m. kickoff. And host game host show host kind of likes it. Yeah. Well, well, hold up. I enjoy an 11 a.m. kickoff because my post game show ends at like 4 o'clock. Speaking you know, my language. Like, oh, what you want to do, babe? We, we got Saturday night. Or I can go watch football that isn't Pac-12 after dark for exactly. once. You know, although that's that's a thing of the past now, but. Um, you know, it, it is fun for the media people. We all eat it up, but I, I know LSU fans, ooh, they hate it. But you only got one, and that's at South Carolina this year. And you'd rather it be a road game at 11 a.m. than a home game for sure. But uh, LSU has actually done pretty well in those SEC road games today at 11 a.m., but I just don't think the fans like waking up early and knocking it out first thing. I would agree with that. Have a great weekend, Preston. We appreciate it. All right, see you soon, Hunt. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.